What is factor investing and should you be investing in this way? Now, before doing that, go to amplified.com, especially if you're an expat or a high net wealth individual and see how I can help you. Now, first of all, let's talk about the basics really quickly. So an individual stock is something like Apple or Amazon, obviously, right? Whereas an index like the S&P 500 or FTSE 100 is just a collection of stocks. Now, what a lot of people don't understand is these are equal weighted indexes. What does that mean in human terms? So if you buy the S&P 500, which has 500 stocks in it, you're not spreading that evenly, right? Because if, for example, Tesla is 5% of the index, every time you put in money, 5% will go to Tesla. If technology is 30% of the index, 30% will go to that particular sector. So it's equal weighted. And what that means is if companies get very big or sectors get very big like technology, that means that by definition, a lot of your money is going to go into those sectors. So I made a video about five or six years ago where I predicted that the FANG stocks would get bigger partially because as more people are putting their money in indexes and ETFs like the S&P 500, more money would naturally go into those particular stocks. However, you can obviously see the risk that if a company gets really big, like NVIDIA or, or whatever, or if a sector gets really big, like technology, you are concentrating your risk a bit. So people have been thinking, is there a better way to invest? Could a different way of investing beat the market? Now, Farmer and French, two academics, found out that there are five factors to uh, potentially beat the market. And I'm not going to go over all of them, but I'll give you some examples. So, for example, small caps. They found in the long term, small caps have outperformed large caps. They also found that value stocks, in other words, stocks that are relatively undervalued compared to the market when you look on a price to book ratio or whatever, tend to do well. So small cap value stocks long term have beaten the S&P 500 as an example. Likewise, others are things like momentum and quality and so on. Now, has this worked long term? Now, if you look very, very, very long term, like over 100 years, it has worked. But what's interesting is if you look since 2004 and especially 2007, a lot of them have stopped working. So, for example, small caps have beaten the S&P 500 very, very long term. But in the last, say, 15 years or so, they have not. Likewise, value stocks have stopped beating the S&P 500, whereas historically they have. Because in recent years, uh, and not just recent years, last 10 years or 15 years, companies that are very high, highly valued, like the tech stocks, have done very well. Now, in comparison, quality has consistently beaten the index. So if you have a look at the MSCI World Quality Index and compare it to just MSCI World, it's outperformed consistently. Not every year or not every five years, but it has you know, outperformed in the last 10, 15 years and also very long term. Likewise, the S&P 500 Quality Index has beaten the S&P 500 in the last five years uh, and also the last 50 years and so on and so forth. So factor investing does have a lot of academic evidence backing it up, but the problem is that there's no guarantee in the future it's going to outperform because things like small cap and small cap linked to uh, companies that are, are value small caps uh, were doing very well and outperforming for a very long period of time until they didn't. So ultimately, it can work. Quality has outperformed the general index long term. So if you can find an index or ETF which is linked to quality, it could be a good idea to buy it. But having said that, that's no guarantee about future performance.